All right, we're going to go through the steps of breaking down this stone fountain into simple shapes and basic forms and then uh, take it to sort of a finished sketch level. Um, it's in real time, so it's going to take a minute, um, about 20 minutes or so. Um, so the first thing that you do is you always begin with a flat analysis of shape. Um, and this is for learning purposes. Later on, once you have this in your head, you may not need to do this. But if you're creating, coming up with ideas, designing, you may want to begin with this flat shape um, sort of sketch anyway, because it takes a lot of the pressure off of having to think about too much at one time. And that's kind of the goal of this, is just think about one little thing at a time. And basically, it's triangles and rectangles, um, and that's about it. It's not a, it's not an incredibly complicated object at the core. So, um, one of the things that I like to do is seek out the most, the largest shape first, and then work into the smaller shapes and build from there. Um, you can measure, you can um, estimate the proportions, but usually your your instinct when you're doing the shape analysis is you'll get pretty close to the proportions and if you need to make wild adjustments later on you can always do another one or you can make those adjustments directly when you convert to form now when you do this uh, shape analysis I wouldn't go into the extreme detail of each brick here what you're looking for is anything that is distinctive about it and that that projects in and out of the form uh, Texture details, like the bricks, will go in sort of towards the end of the finishing part of it. Um, so you'll see at the top there's a little teeny uh, two-sided box sketch. And that's just a reminder that this is what this form is going to break down into. Um, so let's see. I like to... Um, begin very very simply with that front corner and as I work on this basic shape I always turn the page a lot because it's easier to draw from certain angles to get these relatively straight lines and it also helps you judge these three parallel lines that need to happen to create the proper box and you can also kind of sight down where these lines are going to make triangles and make sure that they're coming close to being um, convergent at, and along the same sort of basic horizon line. So if you know anything about perspective, you can bring those techniques in, but not to the point where it slows you down and you get paralyzed by doing stuff that's too analytical. And if things are off just a little bit, it doesn't really matter. Uh, because again, this is just a sketch. It's not like a finished product or anything. So. Here we go. Now we're we're getting into this idea of things projecting out. So we're translating this um, this projection that we did in our sketch out into space that breaks away from this simple box form. And anything that that breaks up the outer contour gives it its distinctive character. And here we're adding, we're building onto this sort of medium-sized form that stacks on top and making sure that we get each sort of register of those layers on there. Then we have to stack on the top of the fountain. And basically we follow those guidelines that we've set up at the very beginning because we know we can, can kind of relatively trust them. Now we're stacking on a little bit of a, a pyramid shape or a piece of a pyramid to get these diagonals that go down into the box. But really we're thinking mostly box form. Um, we don't have to have full pyramidal analysis here in order to make this work. And then I'm also kind of simplifying and idealizing the forms that are there uh, because we can add character to the forms later. 
And now we have to build on the base with another box form. And you can already see that these aren't really super perfect, but we'll get there in the end. We'll, we'll make some adjustments and, and, and improvements. So we have to kick that one down a little bit. I just want you to realize that whenever you're doing an object drawing, it's, it's not a final thing this early on, and you can make huge adjustments even without erasing. And as you finish up, you can, you'll be able to hide those changes through the process. And here we're trying to get in all of the details that we noticed uh, for the medium shapes and the characteristic details of the form. Now, if you were doing a very complicated object, you would probably do each side that you could see. Like if you could see the top, and both sides, you may need to do all three. But since this is relatively uncomplicated on this other side, I didn't bother with that because that's just too much time on the analytical and planning phase. Um, but note that you can do that if you need to. Keep that idea in your back pocket. Now here I can go into some of the smaller forms and I can create other details that are going to project in and out of space. My thought on detail is if it's a surface detail and it doesn't change the form in any way, like it doesn't project in or out, like it's a logo flat on something, for analytical sketches like this, I eliminate it. Um, you can put those things in as a finishing detail if you want to. But um, until you get the form right, those are kind of extra things that don't really add to the distinctive character of the form. Okay, so there I added several details to make that door work and clarify that it was a door. Um, and I can use some line weight actually to begin to define certain areas and to create shadows. Because one of the things that you notice is on that projection of the form, it's not really that deep, so I don't have, I can't get like much of a receding line to go back in there. But I can use a little bit of shadow to create that illusion without having to do all that work. Then at some point, I have to go back through and begin cleaning up some of these lines and defining exactly what they are. So I know that this area is going to go into shadow anyway, so I don't really need it to be. Um, very distinct under there. I just need a few lines to get the major areas cleaned up. And this is where you may want to sharpen your pencil again because you're going to go back in and really begin to define some areas. And thinking ahead into the shadows, I can use these heavier lines as the beginnings of the shadow side of the object. One of the things that I see people do too early on is they get really heavy lines too early um, within the first couple analytical stages. We're moving into like the third or fourth stage of this where we've already made a pass through it to get the basic form. We've added detail, added detail again. Um, and we're progressing into a lot of the smaller areas. So we've had enough time to analyze this and kind of fix any major errors. Um, again, this doesn't have to be perfect and, and everything to work. So I don't want you to get stuck on fixing problems. Um, the most important thing is to, is to flow through the stages and make small adjustments as you go. So whenever you notice a, a little detail that you didn't notice before, um, and add and when you're adding small shapes you want to be sure that that you run these through the whole object um, and find areas where they're uh, where they're similar or there's a variation on it or something all the way through and 
Okay. So now we can help define some of the some of the brickwork here. And these bricks are kind of they have little curved areas and little straight areas because they're so worn. So I want to be sure to add that distinctive detail onto here. And you know, you can skip around in the process if you're confident that it's going to work. If you're taking it very procedurally, you would want to do all these these lines at the same time so that you don't get too far ahead in any any one thing. One of the biggest problems that people have when they begin drawing is that they render everything too early on and it kind of hurts the whole process. So here I've noticed that these brick textures um, change the character of the outer contour. So I want to go in and create those little indentations in the outer contour that are really distinctive. And I'm making them bigger than they probably are in the photo, but that's so that I can communicate it in the drawing more effectively. So here again, I'm using these little shadows to communicate low depth inset and outset. It's a good little trick to have in your back pocket. Okay, so now this thing is kind of developing to the point where I'm into the small forms. So I've got the big big forms laid out, the medium forms laid out, and now I have to get into the smaller detailed forms. And again, I'm not looking for details in like what color is this rock and you know, tiny little things, but I want distinctive details that add form. So here, I noticed that there's some little scoop looking things there. So I need to add those all around. And then I hadn't defined this little underside there. So that I had to get defined. So here we're at a pretty good stage, right, where everything is kind of shaping up. And now it's going to begin, now we have to work into all these small forms and get enough texture so that it doesn't look like a bunch of random perspective lines, that it's actually looking like bricks. So we just sort of relatively slowly work through these taking care to pull from the reference for the individual character of certain bricks and the way that it's constructed. You know, if the if there's a certain texture that's not working for your drawing, you can exclude it, right? But the reference is there to give you shapes and marks that you wouldn't normally make on your own. And, you know, you could create something similar without reference if you had the shape sort of in your head, but it wouldn't have the same character or feel as using references. So here I'm going through paying attention to the way these bricks intersect. And mostly what I'm focusing on is drawing the little shadows that these inset and outset parts of the brick create. So as if you're drawing the spaces between the bricks. And you can see in the reference how it picks up light and creates shadow for almost every single brick. And there's a strange distinctive like organically cracked part here. I thought that was interesting. I thought, thought that should go in there. That's not something that you would think to create on your own without a reference. It's too strange and and random. But it works in the drawing. So I thought it would be worth including. Okay, now we have to develop this side to the level that the other side is developed. And then we're also being careful not to overdo it with the detail. Like if you go overboard with detail, it can just become too much to look at. And 
when everything kind of has equal importance and everything's equally detailed, then it's kind of like nothing's important. So you have to pick and choose what to include and exclude from the photograph. And that's the coolest thing about drawing as opposed to photography. Um, you know, photography, at least without doing a lot of Photoshop, you're kind of stuck with what's there and what's included in the photograph. But in drawing, you can include and exclude, embellish or add very quickly, and no one will know the difference because it's just a drawing. And again, bringing up the, that idea of using little shadows to create inset and outset. And by little shadows, I mean just heavier lines. Here's this area of the fountain where I think water actually came out here. I don't think these things operate anymore. It could operate, but I think they operated for a very long time. This is kind of like a face where water water would come out as well. And the other thing too is the value of these lines that I'm putting down. It's not the darkest that the pencil can go. It's probably related more towards the core value in the five value system. So it's about like 75% of the way there. Um, if you go the full value, it, it kind of kills the effect of the drawing because it makes it sort of jump off the page when you draw it too dark. And then here I'm trying to interpret and give the bricks uh, a similar density um, over on this side. And then there's a neat progression on this side where they become more worn the closer they are to the bottom. So I wanted to include that here. So if you were doing a line only drawing, you would probably stop here or, or you know, maybe close to here where everything's defined and it's all ready to go. And in fact, if you're working digitally, you might do this scan it or take a picture of it, put it in Procreate, Photoshop, or whatever digital photo, digital software that you use, and then you can work uh, on top of it or under it um, to create a fully realized sketch. But here we're gonna, um, we're gonna actually complete the drawing. So the easiest way to begin doing value is just on the side that has shadow, which is this facing side, is to just put tone down and ideally you want to go right for that middle value tone for in our five value system so we have two light values and three dark values and there's I've done more detailed videos on this five value system so you have white you have the half tone you have the tone you have the core and then you have the drop shadow, which is full black. And putting this chart every time you do value when you're practicing really helps. Even when you're not practicing and you're creating something finished, having that even on like a second sheet of paper so you can refer to it is really great. Um, you may even need 10 values if you're doing something fully rendered. So here I'm looking from the, this big area over to the chart and saying, well, okay, this is more of a half tone feel, so I can go a little bit darker. Um, I'm going to create a gradient that goes across it to get this reflected and bounced light effect on it. Um, so I don't want to get too dark, but I can start to push it a little further. And I ignore, like, you know, the fact that these are relatively dark um, stones, they're not pure white, because what I'm trying to do is get the light to work in the drawing. Now here I can get into the heavier tone to core values and start to fade them down. And you'll notice that I'm losing some of the line, line work as this happens, but that's okay, because you can just come back and bring it back later. It's there, you know where it is, so it's not an issue to pull it back out. And we'll do that as we finish the sketch. 
So using the side of the pencil to lay that do tone down really works out well a lot of the times. Picks up a lot of the paper texture and gives it kind of this, this grit, which is really a nice characteristic of pencil drawing as opposed to um, using pen or markers or anything like that. Um, and it's good for stone, actually, because it, it gives you some physical texture that imitates the stone texture in, a, in, a, in an interesting way. So here, I went into that, did that gradient that you see in the photo. So now it feels like there's light bouncing up off the street and back onto it. And then I can go back in and pull these essential details together again because they got a little lost, right? Here I'm working into the heavier core, maybe even some drop shadow level. And I'm, you know, you also notice that I'm ignoring the fact that door is black, um, which I think is really important to do that you, in this, in this style of analysis, um, if you're doing a full painting, of course, you would, you would take that into account, but this is just to get the forms across. I always think of it like hanging on, right? You know, it's it's a balance. You know, you can lose some of this detail to the value. Um, and then there are certain styles of drawing and painting where you could lose a lot of detail, and it doesn't matter. But in this one, I wanted to go for a, a higher level of clarity. So here I'm trying to find spots to push the value down a lot. The most obvious spot for drop shadow is right at the bottom. And it's a tiny, thin little drop shadow. If we were in a full lit, sunlit day with bright light, you could have a large area of drop shadow, but here it's very tiny because it's all just ambient light coming from um, a cloudy day. Then I kind of lost this front corner, so I need to pick up that front corner again um, because that needs to pull forward, and right now it's kind of just sinking back a little bit. So you'll notice that I spent almost all the time on the dark side, but there's little bits of shadow on the light side as well. So I need to get those in too. Again, accessing more of the side of the pencil. And basically we're going from a little bit of tone into the half tone to fade that. Create a little soft shadow. Here we're basically, we're, we've got it basically wrapped up. So here's where you take another look. Just double check yourself. Make sure there's nothing that bugs you um, and nothing that you need to push or finish. So this is about the sketch level that we want to get to. It's not like a totally finished polished rendering thing, and that's totally okay. So try these techniques out and have fun with it.